Hi everyone, I'm Scott from Costumers for Christ and you're watching Creative Costuming. Today I want to show you a tutorial that I should have done a long time ago and I'm simply calling it Sewing Basics for Cosplay. And the basic idea is just that I want to teach you how to sew. Uh, it's a skill that I think every cosplayer needs to have and it's, it's really not as hard as a lot of people think it is. So first I'm going to introduce you to a few different types of fabric that are common for cosplayers to use. Uh, then I'm going to introduce you to the sewing machine. I'll help you get it all set up and ready to sew. And then finally I'm going to show you a few simple stitches that you can use on a variety of different materials. So if you're all set and ready to go, let's go look at some fabric. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, uh, as I said, is introduce you to a variety of different kinds of fabric that you're likely to use while creating costumes. Um, and these different kinds of fabrics, at least in my mind, divide into two basic categories. So there's stretch material and non-stretch material. So let's start with some non-stretch material. First off is your basic 100% cotton. This is sometimes called broadcloth, and it comes in various thicknesses and different styles. This is a yellow polka dot, but obviously you can get it in just solid colors. You can get it with licensed characters like Marvel or DC or Disney characters on it. And you would usually use this for making dresses or other uh, things like that. My wife used a blue 100% cotton fabric to make her Peggy Carter dress. So this is your basic material, pretty easy to work with, and you can find at just about any fabric supply store like Joann's or Walmart or any other place like that. Another basic fabric is satin, and you'll notice that satin is very shiny on one side and not quite as shiny on the other side. Um, it does not have a lot of stretch to it, but it, um, it does wiggle a lot, which is what makes it kind of difficult to work with but this is also a material that you're probably going to want to use frequently. Um, I make all of my capes, um, at least like Batman and Robin, especially those two-tone capes where it's like black on the outside and yellow on the inside. Um, I make those out of satin, and so I'll show you how to work with that. Uh, another non-stretch fabric that's going to be common for cosplayers is pleather, sometimes referred to as PU leather. That's short for polyurethane leather. It's basically just a faux leather. And it's usually generally kind of lightweight. Sometimes they will have a little bit of a stretch to it, but not a whole lot. This isn't the kind of, it's not a spandex material by any means. Um, but cosplayers will use this to make gloves or jackets, that sort of thing. And you can find this material at uh, Joann's in a few different colors, like black and, and maybe white or gray or brown, a few kind of earthy colors. If you want a variety of colors, brighter colors, you can look up lychee, L-Y-C-H-E-E, -E, on eBay or whatever other website, and you'll be able to order it from China in a whole lot of different colors. Now, another non-stretch material would be just a little bit heavier than pleather is marine vinyl. Marine vinyl is what I encourage people to use when making boots. This is um, similar in look and appearance on the outside to pleather, but it's much heavier and thicker. Uh, it usually doesn't have any stretch to it, um, and it's, it's just a sturdier material, so it works really well for, for boots or something else, maybe gauntlets if you're making those separate from the gloves themselves. Now, moving on to our stretch material, one of the basic materials would be cotton spandex. This feels a lot like t-shirt material, but it tends to be a little bit more stretchy than a general t-shirt. Um, you can stretch it quite a bit. It's fairly easy to work with, but it tends to be pretty thin. Um, I, I don't recommend it for most projects, but if you're just learning how to sew, this would be a good material to start off with. Next is your basic uh, Lycra spandex. And this is available at Joann's. Um, you can get it in a whole variety of different colors. It has a lot of good stretch to it, and generally, it's kind of shiny. Um, it's shinier on one side than it is on the other, but both sides tend to be kind of shiny. And this is what I would use for making um, like maybe an animated series Superman, or I used uh, the same thing for our Fantastic Four costumes, comic book versions, stuff like that. Another stretchy material is Milliskin spandex. And this is just a, a really beautiful 
uh, very stretchy material and you can get this from uh, spandexhouse.com or you can get some at Joann's. They don't have a, a huge variety of millskin spandex but they do have some and uh, this is in fact this very color is what I use for making my comic book version or Christopher Reeve version Superman and so this is kinda like your standard go-to for comic book character costumes and then lastly I want to introduce you to this textured material. I don't know how well you can see this on screen, but if you look close, you can see that there is a texture on this fabric. And that gives your costume just a little bit of pop. Um, but this is uh, spandex, and so it does stretch. It's a poly spandex. Uh, and this particular fabric comes from Gotham Garment Supply. So go check out their website. There'll be a link down below. Uh, and you can get a variety of colors from them for various costumes. Now that you know what kind of fabric to look for, let's go get our sewing machine set up. This is a pretty standard model sewing machine. Uh, I think I picked this one up for around $100 at Walmart. Um, the brand is Brother, and I really like Brother sewing machines, but Singer also makes good sewing machines. And no matter which brand you're using, they're going to be basically the same. Uh, every sewing machine is essentially the same as far as the main components. There might be slight differences between one and another, but for the most part, everything is the same. Um, this particular one, you'll notice it has a screen right here. This is where you read what stitch you're using. And then down along here are all the various stitches your machine is capable of doing. If you've got like a hundred stitches like mine does, don't be overwhelmed by that just the top row is all you're really ever going to need. Um, and even that, you might not need all of them. So, in addition to the major unit itself, you'll also have two additional parts. One is the power cord. And the power cord plugs in right back here. And then the other piece is the presser foot, or the pedal, that is. And the pedal also plugs into the back of the sewing machine, right here. And then you put the pedal itself on the floor, and you use it just like a gas pedal. You press down on it with your foot in order to make the sewing machine go, and let off in order to make it stop. Once you've got those particular pieces in place, let's get this powered on and then take a closer look. You'll notice as soon as you turn the power switch on for your sewing machine that a little light comes on over here. I'm going to try and get you close so that you can see everything going on down here. This little item here is called the presser foot. Your fabric will slide underneath here as this needle goes through the fabric stitching it as it presses through. Now right here is a little lever that lowers the presser foot and raises it. When you're ready to sew you lower it and when you're done sewing you raise it. You'll also notice that there is a little button on the back of here that releases the presser foot. That's so that you can change it for a different foot for different projects and the best way to put that back on is to simply lower the presser foot and it snaps back into place. Now if you want to look at some of the other presser foots this uh, little compartment usually comes off of most sewing machines. You just slide it over and inside you'll find a variety of little components including different feet for the, the sewing machine. Now, you can turn the, the needle manually by turning this dial on the side of the sewing machine. As you go forward, the needle goes down, and then it comes right back up again. You can go forward or backward. Generally, you want to go forward. 
here you'll see that the sewing machine automatically sets to stitch zero which you can see right here normally we're going to want it to be set on stitch one these buttons here control how wide or long your stitch is going to be we won't mess with those right now now before we can start sewing you need some thread and a bobbin the thread you can buy at just about any craft store and same with these little plastic bobbins and what we need to do is put some thread onto the bobbin too so here's how we load the sewing machine you'll notice a little instruction guide on the top here simply take this piece off slide the thread on and then put this piece back on securing it in place then you take the thread and bring it down here through this little piece up and around here once you've got that in place you take it through the bobbin and there should be a little hole where you thread thread through and then you take that place it down on there and snap it over hold on to this little end of thread and then gently press down on your gas pedal you'll notice it takes off pretty quick and this begins filling with thread once you have enough thread on there you simply release the pedal snap this back pull it off and snip the thread here Next, we're going to load this bobbin into the sewing machine. So what you're going to do is pop this little piece off. There's a lever that pulls to the side, and this comes out. Then you take your bobbin and simply set it down inside. And you bring the thread around the little hook all the way over here and then trim it off just like that next we're going to remove the thread from up here and we're going to follow the other pattern shown bring it through this down in here all the way down and you can see little numbers the two points down this way the three points back up this way there's a four up here pointing over and down And then you need to take the thread and guide it right through the needle. You want to pull the thread about six inches outside and underneath the foot. Then you manually turn this dial toward you and the needle goes down into the machine and pulls the thread from the bobbin out. You can then use that little plastic piece to push that thread to where you can reach it with your fingers and pull it. So you now have two threads coming through your sewing machine and then you simply replace that piece. And now you're ready to start sewing. Now I'm going to show you two very simple stitches that you'll use time and again on all your cosplay projects. First I'm going to show you a straight stitch, and that's what you'll use on the non-stretch fabrics. Then I'll show you a stretch stitch, and of course that's what you're going to use on the stretch fabrics. I'm going to start off with the satin, because it's particularly hard to use. And what I'm going to do just quickly here is cut this piece in two and then I'll show you how to sew these two pieces together. 
So what you want to do is take your two pieces of satin face to face, that is shiny sides together, and then lay it underneath that foot, lining it up with the line just to the side of your presser foot. Once you get it in there, you lower this foot, and your thread should be sticking out like this. Then, you want to press this little button here, which goes backward on your fabric. It will automatically make several stitches in reverse, and then stop when you release it. Then, you want to gently press down on the gas pedal, and the machine will start going forward. As you press harder, the machine will speed up. When you reach the end of your fabric, simply press this button again, and the stitch will lock in place. When you're finished, turn your dial to pull the needle out of the fabric. Then, lift the lever that raises the presser foot, and then pull your fabric backwards and to the side. You can then trim the thread, and you can see that we created a stitch. Now normally you would use the same color thread as your fabric, but I'm intentionally using a contrasting thread so that you can see it clearly. And what this does, is when you open this piece up, it'll be joined together with a seam down the center. Now if you want to make a nice looking finished seam, what you're going to do is take, open this up, and normally you would iron it out, but I'm not going to show you how to iron it. Open it up, lay this flat, and then we're going to stitch again inside the seam allowance. So again, we'll go forward a couple stitches, and then back, and then forward again, making sure that our thread doesn't get sucked back into the machine. Lock it in place once more. Turn the dial to pull the needle out. Lift the lever. Pull the fabric back and out. And now you can see the underside looks like this. And the outside looks like this. That gives you a nice flat finish on your seam. For the textured fabric, we're going to use a different stitch and a different foot. So, on this sewing machine, what we want to use is stitch number 8. So you simply press the plus button until you get to number 8. I also like this stitch to be a little longer than what it automatically sets to. So I'm going to press that button twice and go up to 3.5. Then we're going to press that little button on the back of the foot to release the foot and take this foot out of the way. Open up your compartment and find the foot labeled G. Place the compartment back and then simply put this foot underneath and lower the hammer locking the foot in place.
Now, we'll take our two pieces of textured spandex, and we want them to be face-to-face, -face, just like the satin was. So in this case, the two textured sides are facing each other, and the smooth sides are facing out. Press the fabric down right along where the foot is. Let me give you a closer look at that. These two pieces should line up next to each other and line up right along the edge of this piece here. Your thread should be off to the side over here. And again, we're going to start by pressing the reverse button. Now, this time, instead of going backward, the needle simply went up and down. It created a knot at the end. Then, once again, we gently press down on our gas pedal, and the fabric will go forward. You'll notice that it's not going nearly as fast as it did with the straight stitch. That's because it's doing multiple stitches going forward, backward, over, and back again. Once again, the fat, harder you press on the gas pedal, the faster the sewing machine will go. You want to gently guide the fabric with your fingers, allowing the sewing machine to pull the fabric through at its own pace. Once you reach the end, let off the gas pedal. Press the reverse button. And then turn the dial on the side in order to raise the needle. Lift the lever. Pull the fabric backwards and out. And then trim your thread. And you can see here that we have a very different kind of stitch on the side. This is called an overlocking stretch stitch, and it is the perfect stitch to use on stretch fabric. It holds up really well, it won't tear or pop, and it allows the fabric to naturally stretch the way that it would if the stitch wasn't there. And you can see it creates a finished edge, so there's no need to lay it flat and stitch over it again. From the other side, even using white fabric, or white thread that is, you can barely tell that there's anything there other than just the line from the seam. Well, that pretty much wraps things up. With just these two simple stitches, you've got all the knowledge you need to tackle just about any sewing project that might come up. I hope this video and tutorial was useful for you and helpful. If it was, please let me know. I'd love to hear from you. And if you have questions, go ahead and leave those in the comments section. I'll scroll through there and answer as many as I can whenever I have time. I'll be posting another tutorial in the near future on how to make cosplay gloves, spandex gloves. And that tutorial will also include a free downloadable pattern. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check back often. In the meantime, thanks for watching. God bless and happy costuming.